G'day. A long time ago, people started asking me questions like, how do I get promoted? How do I get a new job? How do I build myself up? And I think the topic really is about transition management and leadership. I'd like to explain a few things about it today. Uh, I hope this is enjoyable for you and I'm going to give you a few hints um, that maybe will help you get the next job. I think most importantly is to realise that a lot of promotion and a lot of transition and a lot of being plucked into another job from one job to the next comes from the internal state that you create within, within yourself. If you're loving your work, if you're thankful for what you've got, if you have a sense of purposefulness in your work, that sense, that uh, internal experience will overcome a lot of difficulties that actually make um, uh, significant numbers of people stumble in their approach to being promoted and getting new jobs. So we need to have an inner dialogue that's very, very strong. Call it a spiritual essence or call it the ability to tap in to that inner work that's so important. A key element of being promoted is to have an understanding of the three ingredients that make you differentiate yourself from other people in your workplace. Ultimately, going for a promotion and moving up in a business is a competitive environment. There are others wanting that space. You are competing against them. They are your colleagues and your allies and your friends. And your uniqueness is the thing that is going to give you the ability to get promoted. And there are three ingredients of it. What you bring to the table strategically, what you bring to the table culturally, and what you bring to the table structurally. Um, if you create a grid, a nine, uh, a nine box grid on a, ta on, on a sheet of paper, on the bottom left hand corner is, is the quality that is not differentiated from everybody else but is expected of you. In other words, if you're an accountant, accurate, numeric um, uh, and legal representation of numbers, <coughs> that can't be a differentiator. So that's a good starting point is to know what you can't differentiate. It's expected. Up the left hand column, it's the human aspect, the value you add from a cultural point of view. And you might say in the top left hand box, I engage people, I motivate people or I inspire people. So this is a human quality. It will not increase your salary. So this is a, a value add up the cultural column on the left hand side. Along the horizontal axis, bottom right hand corner, we're going to place your strategic value add. If you are the guru of uh, business turnaround, for example, if you're the guru of uh, business strategy, if you're the guru of being able to translate problems into opportunities, something is going to give you a value add on the bottom axis and this is the, the determinant of your income. Left hand column, uh, is the determinant of your job security, the value you add, the right hand, the right hand uh, row and all the way to the bottom right determines the, the amount of income you get. And the top right hand corner is where you bring them all together in a structural uh, level and say, I am differentiated from all the other people applying for this job because of the amalgamation of my strategy and cultural values which cause what? And that would be, um, I, I am a, 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 an engaging, strategically competent turnaround consultant, or I'm a strategically, uh, I'm an I'm a engaging, um, highly accurate um, um, anal analyst that brings those two things together as a CFO or a COO. And this is how you create differentiation in job process. It's, it's vital for being promoted. Nature destroys anything that doesn't fulfill its purpose. And I think it's really important for you to realize that if you don't feel that you're fulfilling your purpose, you will not get promoted. 
there is a sense of inner integrity. We, we sometimes think we can mask this inner integrity and go for a job promotion without really having um, a burning ambition to become the, um, the, uh, the facilitator of the new role. We might say, I want to be um, a senior executive, but really all we want is the pay that comes from it or the accolade. There, there must, there is a sense, and everybody will pick it up, we're all very intuitive, whether a person is really there because they love the work and they want to do really well at it, or whether they're just in there as a thief trying to get in there, get the job, get the job title, and then run away and prove that, and validate themselves so they can go and get promoted somewhere else, which is corrupt. And people smell that. So we must have a sense of being able to be on purpose in order to reach out and suggest that we would be good in a future role. I think the gauge that I've presented here is a really accurate one. All human beings move from acidic to alkaline. Acidic means angry or frustrated or in chaos or struggling. And alkaline means cool, calm and collected or very um, um, uh, sedated. The lower you are on the corporate hierarchy, the more likely it is that you will go from a zero to 14 in your emotional scale. A leader must stay within the range of five to nine. It, the leader cannot go outside of those spaces. It, it, needless to say, they will be acid and will be alkaline. They will be um, chaos and order, but they can't go too far over that. Otherwise, they lose the respect and trust of those they lead. So if you've got big emotional swings going on at home or at work, um, it may be wise for you to consider a little bit of the discard process or the emotional shower process. Prevention is better than a cure. Um, it, when you're in a, going for a senior leadership position uh, and going for a promotion, when you have a bad day, uh, that, that is on record and that will uh, influence the thoughts and, uh, uh, of others around you who may influence that promotion because the higher up you get, the less of those bad days uh, are allowed to affect you as in, a, in a business way. So prevention is better than cure. And I created the Daily Power Hour, which is a holistic process to keep life in perfect balance and evolve you one step ahead of what you need. It's a powerful process. The other aspect of personal best is being in balance as an individual. And I think what we need to realize here is the old idea of work-life balance, which is work really hard and come home um, and balance it with uh, outside of work is a sign of incompetence and will lead to not being promoted. The person who is working so hard that they get exhausted at work and, and gets a taxi home just in time to get a bit of sleep and get back in the morning, that person is not on the table for promotion. We need to be balanced at work and we need to be balanced at home. Otherwise, we blow our home life as a result of hard work at work and that will affect our work anyway. The important thing about this uh, slide is don't cherry pick and people quite often are self-determined when it comes to self-leadership. They read books, they go and read theory books about the um, um, Buddhist system or yoga and they bring it all to work to solve stress problems or to solve interpersonal problems so they become in a little way their own teacher. The problem with this is it, it causes a thing called cherry picking where we if we have a problem like a problem at home we read a book about it or we'll get therapy we'll solve that problem in isolation to work now work and home are isolated only by a distance of how far we travel they're not isolated emotionally mentally or spiritually and so um, solving a problem at home has to include the 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 backlash of the consequences of that solution in our workplace. If we get told at home we have to be more obedient or more diligent or more behavioral, we may do the very opposite at work because every human is dualistic, two-sided. So don't cherry pick, find a system that works for you, follow it and follow it all the way and don't cherry pick just one idea out of a book and apply it at work, it won't work. As the job gets bigger, so must your skills. And you have to realize that the opportunity to be promoted 
it will be 100% determined at, by the question is, do you have the managerial or leadership skills already before you step in to the higher level of work? In other words, we need to be pre-planned, pre-arranged, pre-ready, one step ahead of the job we want. And we have to start acting in a, in, acting as, in a way that represents where we want to be in the future. <clears throat> I think turning up is probably the most powerful words that I use in business. Are you balanced, centered, and calm? In other words, are you worried about something that happened before? Are you worried about something that's going to happen? Are you giving people 110% of focus? Are you defensive? Are you on the attack? Are you retreating for conversations? Are you tired? Are you listening? Are you uh, interacting properly? Turning up will be, I, I truly believe, the single most important skill for being promoted in a business. Too much listening, you become passive. Too much talking, you become aggressive. Too much worry, you become um, a distraction. Too much, um, um, uh, too many ideas without solution, you become a disturbance. So the, the keeping this turning up thing going uh, is, is I think the single most important quality that must evolve at, at, at before time in order to get promoted. Knowing your identity, where you come from, why you're here, who are you and where are you going is really important. But the ability to move your identity as you move in promotion is really important. Act in the way that you would be when you get promoted. In other words, your identity needs to shift, not stay stuck in stories, stuck in old beliefs, stuck in old victimhood or stuck in the past. It has to evolve every three months. And I encourage my clients who work with me on a full-time basis over a, on a retainer throughout the year to redo their identity statement at least every three months and be able to massage that continually through the discard forms and the vision setting process. It's very important to, to stay in tune, to stay relevant, is to allow your identity to evolve with your job. Interestingly, 72% of employees surveyed do not value their boss. They asked a group of people, I think it was a huge number, like 10 or 20,000 people, you can have two choices, a pay drop and we'll fire your boss, or a pay rise and you keep your boss. 72% said we'll take a pay drop and fire the boss. So many people are not happy with the way things are being led at the moment in business. But of those people surveyed, who of the 72%, of people who surveyed, surveyed who don't like their boss, 60% of them said they wanted to be a boss, which means they believe they have the competence that their boss doesn't. And of course, their boss thought that too before they got promoted. So ambition is rife, leadership quality is not at its highest level. And I think an interesting fact is this, of all the people surveyed in this massive, massive uh, program to, to study leadership in the world, only 23% of them know the difference between leadership and management. A person who knows what leadership is, is in line for, promote, for promotion. A person who's operating in the zone of management is not. We've already spoken about don't carry emotions uh, from one minute to the next, from one job to the next, from meeting to the next, don't carry emotions home. These emotions, the longer they stay in us, let's say we get angry at work, we get uh, something doesn't go right, we get frustrated at 10 o'clock, we're still frustrated at 12 o'clock, more than likely we'll forget that we're frustrated by the time we get home. But the frustration is doing its work chemically, physically, emotionally, spiritually in us, even though we've forgotten about the thing that happened at 10 o'clock. It's really important to be emotionally aware, to, be, to flush these emotions down the toilet within an hour of them happening. And that's why the discard form and the emotional shower are such critical skills in the back on track process and the leadership growth program. All of my clients develop a daily routine and this daily routine is, is set up so that there's a structure around which they can enjoy every moment of life. 
structure of routine is so important and not to break that routine. Otherwise, as the pressure comes on, the routine goes down. The individual balance goes away in each area of life. Health goes down. The ability to lead goes down and the ability to be promoted is gone. My name's Chris Walker. Please have a beautiful day. Bye for now.